Welcome to the new video on history and civics. Today we will see chapter 5, the Delhi Sultanate. Delhi Sultanate had five dynasties over 320 years. So many kings, many rulers, many sultans came, ruled our country. So we will see the first one, the slave dynasty. Slave dynasty. There is a slave called Kutbuddin Aibak. He was a slave of Muhammad Ghori. So when Muhammad Ghori went back to his country, he made Kutbuddin Aibak his slave to take care of his territories. He was a man who was very kind. And he was a man who was very much generous. So he used to help people generously. He used to give black sacrifice. That's why his name also was given the lap box. So Kutub. So he made many buildings, many mosques. Also he made Kutub Minar. Five stories Kutub Minar. And he finished it. After him, one king came called Samsudi Iltutmish. He was very powerful ruler of that dynasty. And he shifted his capital from Lahore to Delhi. From that, that time onwards, Delhi became the capital of dynasty, of slave dynasty. Once Tsangesh Khan came looking for shelter, he didn't give him the shelter because he wanted to save his land, his empire from him. Because he knew that if I give shelter to him, we'll be in trouble. And that's why he took the very good decision of not giving him the shelter in his kingdom. And the revenue system in the land, land revenue system he had. So he minted gold and silver coins too so that his empire could run smoothly, nicely. Next ruler was Rezia Sultan, the only woman ruler in Delhi Sultanate. She was the daughter of Iltutmish. She thought and found him, her very capable leader. So he appointed her his own successor. So Raja Sultan became the next ruler of the slave dynasty. Even though she was a typical, he was a front runner, fighter, front runner, leader. Even though he was a very capable woman to be a ruler, nobles, they hated her because nobles didn't want her to, be, to rule over them. They hated her because she was a woman, that's what they say. After Sultan, when he deposed, our Sultan came the Gyasudin Balban, another very powerful leader of the slave dynasty. He popularized, he was a very powerful leader, and he had the people. He told the people to have sister, that's very uh, system which uh, resented many people. Sista, they are, when they come to they came to uh, king, they used to lie down and salute him. So people resented this kind of sister system. Anyway, the next uh, dynasty we can see the Khalji. Khalji dynasty, the first and the foremost powerful king was Alauddin Khilji. He brought many reforms in his country. First of all, he reformed the administration. So what did he do? He posted spies in different areas of his land so that they can give him feedback what is happening in his kingdom. So he had a continuous checkup 
Gauthi's administration. And also, he curbed the power's nobles. He didn't want nobles to be more powerful, powerful than him. So he had a continuous checkup on his, their power play. Another system was the economic major system. What is that? He had a tax for the peasants, but he charged them with the fertility of land. If the land is good, if the land is more fertile, you charge them more. If the land is less fertile, you charge them less. So he was very concerned about the tax which the peasants pay. But and also peasants pay their tax directly to the king. So there was no middleman. So he, he saved them from middleman. So corruption was less. Anyway, another reform he did was the reform in the army. Reform in the army. Because army was the one area which the kingdom stood strong, tall. So he brought some reforms like that time, in his time, the soldiers were not paid in, in uh, cash. So he paid them in cash. First of all. Secondly, he started bribing the horses. They had many horses. They started branding the horse, horses. So when they brand the horses, they knew that which horse is which kind. So they can differentiate, they can select superior horses from the inferior horses. So that reform he brought in his army, branding the horses. Next, he had a description of soldiers. This is we have got ID. That time he had that kind of ID system for them, description of soldiers, this is called Chehra. So he knew his pen, he knew his soldiers, he knew his army. So this kind of reforms he brought. And that's why he known as a very, very good, powerful leader, ruler of that dynasty. The third dynasty of the Tughlaq dynasty. Tughlaq dynasty. So his full name was Muhammad bin Tughlaq. <coughs> he had a many great ideas, great projects in his mind, but he failed to execute them. That's what historians say. He had a good ideas, good plans, good projects, but he failed somehow or the other, he failed to execute them. So people are wondering what kind of king he was. So also he shifted his capital from Delhi to Tolatabad. He had his own reason to shift the capital. Because in Delhi, in the northern part of India, there were lots of invasions from Mongolians. So he thought if you go to the Tolotapath, Tolotapath was the center of his empire. That's another reason why he shifted the capital. He said, let's go to Tolotapath because Tolotapath is the center of his empire. He thought that it would be easy for him, it would be good for him to control from them his own empire. So he ordered all his men and women, officials, to go from Delhi to Tolotapath. People resented, people were very happy. But he did. People went. After some time, he thought, he realized that it's difficult to control frontier of Delhi, of his country, from Tolotabad. So again, he ordered his men, an official, to go back again to Delhi. People wonder why he did. Some people say that he was ahead of his time, ahead of his age. He thought very far ahead what was going to happen, what he will do. But 
Another thing was that he couldn't execute his plans, projects, and ideas. The next, next uh, dynasty came uh, Sayyid dynasty. Sayyid Khizr Khan Sayyid or the Taimur, another king Taimur had come, Taimur. Taimur came to India, he plundered many uh, uh, wealth, much wealth from India and went back to his country. Before he went back to his country, he appointed Khizr Khan Sayyid his deputy of Multan, Lahore, and he went away. So he ruled his country for a long, for a very short time, say. So say the dynasty lasted very, only 30 years. Then the, the Lodi dynasty comes, the last dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate. So Delhi Sultanate so had a five dynasty ruling over her. So first king or first ruler of Lodi dynasty was Sikandar Lodi. Sikita Lodi was a very capable, very powerful ruler of this. So he made a friendship with uh, Bengal. He had a treaty with many, many uh, kings and rulers so that he can expand his empire. Another, when he died, the Ibrahim Lodi became his deputy, his successor. So he succeeded and he had uh, uh, Afghan leaders, Afghan nobles revolted against Lodi. Lodi was not very successful as, uh, as Sikandar, Sikandar Lodi. Sikandar was the most powerful, most capable, most successful ruler of the Lodi. So he's the last dynasty in India, the Delhi, Delhi Sultanate. So what happened? During this time, in this period, cultural fusion took place. Many trade flourished, art and architecture progressed. And in this time, started two kinds of movements, two kinds of movements that is uh, religious movements, Sufi movement and Bhakti movement. So that's how the Sultanate ended, but the end is a good note because many people came together. The culture, art, architecture came together and they began a culture which was helpful to Indians and foreigners. So that's what we read in this.